Hello, how are you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <coughs> How the devil are you? It's the 2nd of January 2020 and we couldn't think of a better way to ring in the new year than with a nice shiny new episode. And this week we welcome Simon Neal who is the front man from Scottish rock band Biffy Clyro. More of that in a sec. So how are you? How was your Christmas? Calm? Chaotic? Mine certainly was. I'm, I'm, to be honest I'm, I'm pretty pleased it's over. Um, after Boxing Day, I'm like, right, should we just get back to work? But, you know, that's that's just me. So, short intro this week. It was in December. We met up with Simon. He came to meet us in Manchester. It was our last episode recording of the year. So, instead of a cup of tea, we cracked open a couple of cans and hit record. This is episode 109, I think, of the Two Shot Podcast with Simon Neal. Enjoy. I shall see you at the end. Yeah. And I was doing, I'm still doing that TV show until February. Mm. So but now I had this time free, and I knew. Oh, I mean, but I knew that Griff had limited time free, and it's just about getting your ducks in a row. It's always just about the timing with people, and especially doing what you do as well. On what way? Well, trying to fit your own schedule. It's tough enough when it's just other folks' schedules, yeah. or, you're, or you're just your own. But when you're trying to combine both, it's a nightmare. But but then when the stars align, and you go right, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in this. This, yeah, you've been uh, some you know, good, I'm going to be there. You've some good it. folk on. Yeah, yeah, really good. Really Bang, good. It's, love it. It just always surprises me when people say, oh, no, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll come on. Yeah, I think. <laughs> well, it's a nice, it's a nice though. And it's because just the nature of it as well. We get a nice conversational quality in that way. It's nice to be on something, not always talking about a project or promoting well, something. You know, it feels like that's all we ever do. You know, like I'm well, sure like when fun- you're in the rounds. It's well, like- it's funny you say that because I was talking to... Um, I was talking to a chef the other day, which, I mean, people listening to this now will go, oh, yeah, that was weeks ago, or they haven't heard it yet. Because we don't, <laughs> we don't really know when we put, Future these, past or don't know when they put <laughs> these things out. Of course. Um, and I was saying, you know, with sometimes I get a bit scared with people who I don't know at all, especially the, one of the first musicians I did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in fact, the first musician I did was Bill Ryder-Jones, I oh, no way. Yeah, but I knew he's, his stuff's amazing. It's amazing. It's yeah, incredible he's stuff. such a talent. It's unreal. And it's, you know, it's so deep and it's so personal. So yeah. I knew that we had a lot to talk about. Okay. And then when I booked Gaz Coombs to come on, yeah, okay. I was thinking, right, with musicians, the amount of time what they do is they go and promote a song or an album. So they'll have seven or 12 minutes chat with Jules Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and, then and then nothing. And then they play the songs. So fuck, what if we're not going to have like a nice if conversation? Or can we get, are we going to, can we talk about the past? Can we talk about this? Can we talk about what? The guy's I, one was great. It was interesting to hear his chat about Spielberg. Yeah, yeah. I know, which, that was, which was I brilliant. remember, you know, I remember. Yeah, well, I remembered it, but I wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Because things just go down different avenues don't you're, they you're never sure how you're never sure how true it is, up it is. Exactly. Yeah. but it seems it's it's even been more clear cut than i thought yeah right? i know it was even better than what i did you what say i remembered it no, was thanks, steve you're all right <laughs> imagine that <laughs> but no it wasn't the right time you know it's the well you know it served them well it served them well you it's know all right, though, isn't it? yeah, absolutely. But yeah that was my worry and it is still my worry with people but I think if do you have you throw, much preparation, sorry, forgive me. Do yeah, you well, much... do, well, I do, I do, I do the minimal amount of what I need to begin a conversation, and then because I'm the the way I like to work with this is I want to be as much of an audience member yeah, okay. as, as the listener is, yeah, so but also I've got two hats on because I need to conduct and I need to navigate and I need to yeah, know where we're going. Have the knowledge but and also, still be surprised. But still be yeah, surprised, yeah. yeah, do you know? Yeah, it's a, so it's because it was funny because I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, I was listening to an actor be interviewed on the radio mm-hmm. and 
the interviewer was exactly that. She was an interviewer. I don't really like to class things as an interview because yeah, and then, she, and it was like she had a, she obviously had a list of set questions that she wanted to ask, okay. and, and she did so. Um, just for example, she would ask this first question, and the person opposite would answer, and she was very free and open and going on all sorts of tangents and going down different rabbit holes. But then the interviewer didn't pick up on that. She just asked the second question that was on the list. And I just think, oh, it's quite clinical. I know. It takes the wind out of your sails, actually, in an interview. I'm sure it's happened to you. Because you do feel like, oh, we could talk about anything here and you can touch on something. And then it's straight back to, and you're doing this next week. You know, and you're like, okay, it's just Uh, one of those. Because you kind of make up your mind almost in an interview what it is, whether it's a conversation, which is obviously the more, you know, the more enjoyable option or literally... Cool. I'll, we'll take our boxes. You take your boxes, and we won't discover anything about each other. But that's absolutely fine, you know. But then but, I always think, well, what? I know it's the not, point. Well, it's not doing. Yeah, exactly. One, what's the point? It's not servicing any of us mm-hmm. as a, you know. If it's an interviewer and a very, it's a very coarse term, the subject. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that what it's registered? I, not on, not on this. Not in this side. No. Blog. But and also to the listener because it puts me off. Yeah. Because I go, oh, well, well, or maybe it's the hat that I've got on now since I've been doing this for a couple yeah, of years. Maybe. That I, you know, I tune into things differently. Yeah, you know what you would do, how you would, t- where you would. T- yeah, and not a in a sort of big way. Going, oh well, I do that differently. I don't, I, no, I, I but don't just, mean it like that. It's yeah. just like, oh, why didn't you do that? Because it would be so much more interesting if we. I think people that. are smarter now as well. Though I think people can recognise, you know, the, the general public, you know, as a, in a way, as a wider sense, can recognise when someone is doing that and just, I'm here because I have to, or I'm doing the interview because I have to, yeah. and it's like literally can't wait to get out of here. And I think people are kind of sick of that these days because there's so much information now. It's like we don't need more information, you know. No, I, mean? I, I know. Mean, you need to discover things. You know, need to try and. Well, that's why everyone needs to know more about. The human, the human instead, side instead of, I know, I'm sure it's a great album, and, yeah. I'm, sure, <laughs> and I'm sure the process was long and tough when you're in that studio in Iceland that you thought would be very it experimental. Would be great. <laughs> it's a little red rum, red. <laughs> but especially with with the actors as well, you must, you know, because what you do for a living is mm. kind of represent perhaps someone else's per, kind of point of view or perspective, and it's so interesting to really discover who someone is when you know them as so many different people. Well, exactly. you know, And maybe that's something that a lot of actors want to keep close to themselves. You well, know? it's funny because some do and some don't. Some d- loathe talking about and uh, having interviews and talking about the, the character and the process and selling the telly or the film or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And some, so they'll just clam up and they just want to get it over and done with as quick as possible with the interviewer who doesn't really care and he's asking the same stock questions okay. that they've just done for seven interviews. But I'm sure you... Do you find that when you're promoting albums? Yeah, we, I'm sure it's similar to you guys. It's early, you know, your profession. It's like a mad junket. You do basically like a week or so of like really intense. Some days in certain countries you can be hitting like 16 interviews in a day. Yeah. And, and by the end, you're you're not even thinking. It's almost like a muscle memory thing, and you you're like, oh, there's the key word from the question, you know. And that's my least favourite thing. To, it's a kind of necessary evil, you know. It, it becomes part and parcel of right. Well, it's the end of it now, and this is the thing that we have to do. It's the it's the same exactly. way you're, you're promoting a, a, a TV show or a film. And it, that, to me, I always view that as the kind of work work aspect because we're we're very lucky. We all get to. We get to do what we enjoy. You know, yeah. there's obviously moments of stress and work when you're on a, a job, but that's the point where I think, you know, what if if I just have to suck this up for a couple of days, you know, <laughs> the, you know, then just get in the head zone, at the headspace, and it's fine. You know, how so, did you guys hook up? How did you? Well, we. I was. I I figured that I wanted to sort of try to learn about how to do this, mm-hmm. and I was off filming in Northern Ireland, and listeners all. You can switch off for a bit. You've heard this before, I'm sure. If not, you, maybe you're new to the podcast and you can listen to the story again. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was filming with Vicky McClaw in mm-hmm. Belfast and I went out for a steak and I was telling her I've got kind of got the seed of an idea that I want to learn how to really talk to people proper. Uh-huh. But you had the, the you yeah, wanted I had, to for a while. I kind of had the idea because I was listening to a lot of podcasts and I was shunning a lot of scripts away because they weren't really... 
inspiring and is that an ins- this is turning to me into is it is that an instinctual thing for you in a script if a script do you, yeah do, is it like just kind of immediate you, you know whether you're going to feel a creation yeah, yeah pretty much yeah because it's all about the character at the end of the day okay you know? i mean i'm sure it's the same if you because i know a few musicians and a friend of mine his friend went off to write an album and they'd they'd written it and just before they're about to record he went no, I'm not happy with this. And literally tore everything up. Whoa. And we have to really start again. Because he, he was obviously writing it and he... Whether he... I don't know him, but whether he was in a good place or not. But he got it all down. But just before, no, I'm not happy with that. OK, OK. So you've got to... I suppose you've got to feel it. Is that the you same did, with writing? Yeah. For you? I, yeah. I, I mean, I can write the songs for our band and... I try and not analyse what I make until like a, a later date. So between albums, I'll just write kind of as many songs as as kind of come out in as natural a way as possible. And it's normally between twenty or thirty. Between by the time we've kind of toured for a while, it's normally eighteen months to two years before we perhaps look at making another record. So in that time, I probably compiled about twenty or thirty songs, and and that's when I start to kind of feel my connection to the songs because. It's the na- human nature is basically the newest thing you make. Initially, you're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And then perhaps it takes a month or two. And yeah. for us, it's like, for me, it's, it's I have to listen to the songs. It's not playing the songs that, that kind of tells me whether it's a good tune or not. It, for me, it's I need to kind of let it flow over me. And so we've just like got our new mixes for this new album now. And I'm, and I'm finally able to kind of fully tell how much I'm enjoying the record. Oh, right, so after you've recorded? Yeah, well, to be fair, that's that's actually not quite right, because the first level of that is actually when we demo all the songs. So we would record the first like, 25 songs. Yeah. And at that moment, I let it wash all over me, and then I'll know what, you know the 12 to 15 songs that, that are the ones that are really still connecting with me, either giving me goosebumps or, or there's lyrics in it where I'm like, that's really, I really like what I'm hitting on there. And then I hone in a little bit in those songs. So it's... I was, it was wrong of me to say that's the mode I'm in at the moment because now it's just made, it's finished, you know, and I'm sure you're the same. There's a, liber- there's a liberation to finishing a project, you know, because yeah. I can accept any errors, mistakes, or if something could be better because it's now done. It's, it's, it's a thing. It kind of feels like a living, breathing thing now. And once you chuck it out into the world, you go, wow, well, there's nothing more I can do with it. Now, it, in a way, I suppose, I know some writers and not necessarily of songs of or authors and script writers and playwriters and they would go well it ceases to become mine now mm-hmm. because i've thrown it out there and i i can't change that yeah. so it, you do with that what you will yeah and it's, an, it's quite an do you feel that a little, like how do you feel the with the podcast as well because that's a different because you're letting people into a different side of who you are and everything. Did that initially, was that strange kind of being the real, you know, not the real you, but you know what I mean? No, was I, know exa- kind I of, do know exactly what you mean. Because sometimes God, I'm really, oh, have I said too see, much. We're having a drink now, so I'm letting you ask me questions. questions. <laughs> is this the ploy, Simon? Is this the, I never let people do this. Um, yeah, it is. And it was, I'm just, you know, Griff will tell you, the first one I ever did was with a, one of my best friends. Oh, to good. try and ease it in, because I've never done it before. Mm. And it's always a very terrifying thing, being grounded and being yourself. Because yeah. I used to hate doing interviews. Like, oh, God, it was, just, oh, really? was, oh, it was it the worst it? thing in the world. I don't want to divulge anything about it. We you didn't talk about the character. Yeah, yeah. And even then I would feel really embarrassed about talking about the character. And it was still the character. Yeah, you go, oh, God, I don't want to sound like some sort of wanky, earnest That's actor. the northern side, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really Anyone is. Anyone from northern Britain, I think, just has that similar thing. If you talk too much about yourself for too long, you're like, well, no, I can't do this. It's nonsense. No, 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 no. You can't talk about me. <laughs> it was your... So... You've, I'm not, ask, I'm not okay. answering any more questions from me, Simon. After, I'm totally... I'm you, grilling them. Do you know why? It's because you're too fucking nice. That's why oh, I'm, right, right. Okay, I'm well, letting let's you get in. To the you always in. seem so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. If only life were that simple, I know. Hey, well, we all know life is very difficult. Oh, I know. I know. Do you think... It, you know what I was talking about? That was um, having a conversation with a chef not so mm-hmm. long ago. And he was... Uh, we were talking about difficult professions and some people always say to me oh god god you're an actor that must be 
oh, how do you do that? It's very, be <laughs> very difficult. And and when I think about sort of uh, careers within the creative industry, I always cite being a musician and running your own restaurant as <laughs> as as being really brutal and difficult because you know you get to that age when you're in a teenager. Come on, let's join us. Form a band. We yeah, can do no. this. We can take it's over easy. the world. And also, you see a good restaurant and they're closed within six months I and they've pumped all that money into the it. The sacrifice that, that chefing and things like that takes, you know, yeah. even from their apprenticeships when they're like, you know, seven nights a week and they're working 10, 12 hour shifts. And I don't know how, like, that. that's a pure Sisyphus. You know, it's like that, that is just. Yeah you're pushing that boulder up the hill and it is kind of the same as, as a band. And but so surely like when you started, when you, cause what were you fifth, like 15 yeah. ish when you this formed is high school band. So yeah, we started this. But you must be carefree then. There's, yeah, there's no pressure. Is there, it, it, there's certainly mustn't be as much pressure as there is. I think we were really lucky because we were quite, very naive when we started. You know, we we grew up in... You were 15, you're supposed to be naive. Yeah, well, <laughs> no. yeah not too world-weary at that point. Yeah. But, but we didn't know anyone that played music or anything really in our part of, t- in our part of the world. And let's just, just for listeners, we need yeah. to geographically place where we are. Sure. Here. Well, um, the, me and the other boys in the band, we grew up in Ayrshire, west coast of Scotland, just south of Glasgow. Um, Glasgow's got always had a, been a really vibing city. You know, I don't know if you spent much time. I there, have. But... I've worked there many times. Oh, of course. Yeah, I course love it. For, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's really great Some and great restaurants as well. Edinburgh's the pretty one, but Glasgow's the vibing one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we basically we didn't we had no ambition, which when it, which seems so unusual to say, but we literally all we were, all I wanted to do was write a song initially that I would, could say, could we play the song such and such? And we would play it and it was like, wow, we've made it. So, so it was all, it was very small steps to start. And I think that was w- what boded well for us because we didn't have a five-year plan. We didn't think, the bands we liked were never popular. What so, kind of bands were you, were you all of the same mindset of the bands that you liked? Which yeah, we were. Um, I mean, Ben and James went through their two unlimited phase as we all probably we, did there in the 90s. <laughs> Um, but there's no limit, Simon. There is oh, no limit. Come on, Reach sorry. for the sky. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologise. We'll edit that bit out. <laughs> We're due to unlimited resurgence. It's going to happen at some point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just your usual kind of like, I guess, pre-teenage nonsense. And then my life changed for better or worse when I saw a Guns N' Roses video on the telly. And that was being like, you know, a kid in Scotland, growing up in the grey part of the world and just seeing these weird alien figures from the other side of the world that would wear like leather hot pants and stuff yeah. you know and as a child I was like just obsessed and I've always been quite obsessive you know if I'm into something I'm, I'm really mad you just sort of go tunnel vision about that thing yes and yeah. then and, and then like 18 months two years later I'll, I'll, you'll never hear me mention it again which is you know would, would you be one of those that if you got an album you would just absolutely play the shit out of it again and again until you go yeah, it's unpalatable. Can't Unfortunately, anyway. yes. And yeah. I've, I've ruined some of my favourite albums that way. You know, just almost when I put it on, it's too familiar we'll now. Hold on it, though. We, I, mean, we'll, I mean, I certainly have, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, that's a kind of like, that's a kind of grown up side of it as well. It, that's That to me is what makes music so so special because it's almost it's almost an entirely personal experience as a listener. You know, I know obviously there's, you know, clubs or gigs or whatever and it's communal, but generally the first time you hear a record that you're interested in or excited about it's kind of by yourself yeah and and, and the head it, it speaks to you take something from it that maybe um tom dick and harry they take something completely different Ex- exactly it, that yeah because yeah, you interpret it through what you're going through at that time in your life and the experiences you've had the music yeah. you've listened to before and things so so i, I like I, that's what I kind of focus on almost when I'm making music is I try and think of that one-on-one l- listener with the listener, you know. Um, Have you always thought like that? Or do you think that's morphed and grown over time? I, I think I've always thought l- like that. I think um, I've kind of tried to maintain that thought process as the band has gotten slightly more popular and, and, and things over the years. Because growing up in a small town and, and you know, I spent a lot of time in my in my bedroom playing guitar you know and watching movies and things and, and and i feel like that was how i 
really fell in love with music and with certain bands. So, so I still that's how I visualize people listening to your album is almost how I used to do it, you know, yeah. for better or worse. And I know times have moved on a lot since then, so I'm not I'm not a luddite, you know. I don't, you know, I know that people consume music differently these days. Of course, days. yeah, yeah. But but that's still yeah, what but the I core visualize. Thing is, it should still be there. It should be. It should be. You know that. I wouldn't want my reason for doing this to change in a massive way. You know, ambitions change and, mm. and your experiences allow you to try different things. But but my actual reason for picking up the guitar, I wouldn't ever want to change. And and, and that gets harder. That definitely gets harder the longer you do things is to, to try and retain that kind of naivety and excitement, innocence about what you do. Because I believe with any kind of art form you can sometimes know too much <laughs> yeah I, and yeah for me for writing songs like i, I started uh, on the violin when i was young oh did you you know and i did all my kind of theory and things and and it really informed my guitar playing but but if, when i look back if i'd if i'd studied more violin i think it would i would have lost something so like i picked up my violin again last year because i'd love to be able to play it but i really don't want to understand completely what, what this, my songs are you know I don't want to know what key what time signature why this bit works why this bit doesn't work it, it, it should be more mysterious than that and so so I definitely had a fear about knowing too much about music because there's there is in, in theory there's rights and wrong ways to do things but as we all know with any type of art th there's no such thing there's no such thing you know a rule comes in play and then suddenly someone around the corner breaks that rule and shows a whole new world to you you know if anything I think it's just habit rather than rules you know i think yeah. people create habits for themselves and for others and really you kind of need to shake them off as much as possible. and also you know we've all seen someone of whatever art form who is technically head and shoulders above so many people but there is zero emotion or yeah. heart into it and for me i can't connect with that at all because i connect on a more emotional level than a technical level of course and and <laughs> Do you reckon? Because I recognise that in certain bands or yeah. certain singers. Do you recognise that? I recognise it in so many things. I remember I took, I took my little boy to the Royal Albert Hall for the first time, and there was a saxophonist on there, and I have no connection with the saxophone mm -hmm. or anything like that at all. And this girl came on, and she played. The saxophone with so much heart and soul, and she just loved it. And I, it, we both went, This is just incredible. It did Never something to you. did something right in my gut. Wow. And, I, and I've got no frame of reference for anybody playing the saxophone. Yeah, it's not, yeah. He's in my top 17 saxophones. Can, just, can, can you put now that's what I call best of saxophone? <laughs> Attract two, because I love that one. I don't know anything about it, but she was just fantastic. That's wonderful. But then again, you know, I've seen um, an actor on, I've seen actors on stage who are technically brilliant, but I don't, feel, I don't feel anything. Doesn't communicate yeah, with and the same connect. with me. I'm, I'm sure the same with music. Yeah. So you know, going back to what you said about if you know too much about how you write, then is the emotion, the emotional side of writing going to take a back to the technical side? Yeah, to the side. technical yeah. side. It's a worry, though. And it's, it's a human... And you know, it's a human, not instinct necessarily, but it's human nature that that something has to give a little, mm. and 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 for me, it's always I'd always rather just let the technical aspects slip a little and keep the heart because, you know, that's the stuff I love over the years with books, music, movies, whatever. You know, it's the, those it's the things that really connect and that stick with you, and that's what becomes part of your memories and. And I think that's also where art really gets supreme value is when you've somehow managed to make something that makes it sway into someone's life. Mm. And before they know it, you've been a part of their life for, for years and years. And and that's that's something that we always don't, we don't necessarily get to see until the odd time. And someone's like, oh, you know, that's, you know, for us, it'll be like, oh, I saw you 15 years ago. And, you know, like, what? wow, you know, you know <laughs> when someone saw us 15 years ago, but I can't believe it's you, you know. But, but you know, it's like, that's quite, a, that's a nice feel. I've really grown to enjoy that aspect, get, you know, getting older and, and kind of when you look back and go, fuck, we've been doing this for quite a while, you know. Just because we're jumping around the timeline a bit and I need to yeah, pick up what you just said there, you're obviously enjoying where you are right now. Yeah, I feel very lucky. But 
has there been times since you started where it wasn't as enjoyable and you've thought, yeah, I don't think we're going to carry on doing this now? I think because all what I always think about is if your art form ceases to become something that you really love and you put your heart and soul into, then well, why would you bother carrying on doing it? Because then it just becomes a job. Yeah, jo- <laughs> yeah, and that's the last thing that we want. That's we why we start doing what we do is yeah, we exactly. didn't want it to ever become yeah. a job. There's, there's been... My hands are very soft for a reason. So <laughs> <you know laughs> yeah, <me>? I <laughs> oh, my dad and my brother get me... My dad and my brother get hands like sandpaper and I'm the soft one, you know how? You know, it's like dainty hands. So, yeah, you must get it in the neck as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Forgive me, what we what we seen here? Just the, about, just about through since yeah. you started and the extreme highs of starting, and then things do tend to pan out a bit. Yeah. So then, does the enjoyment go? And do you think, ah, well, we've done this now. We've got to a certain point in our fame. I don't want to carry on doing it. I think it could, could have potentially happened for for me. I always try and pursue a slightly different project if that's happening. So. To do and go and do sort of solo stuff. Or? Not necessarily solo, even as the band. So, say a couple of years ago, we did an MTV unplugged record and and gig, and that that kind of came at a good time because I felt like I I wasn't being particularly fruitful at that point with my songwriting, and actually it was a it was a wonderful little aside that we went and did this acoustic tour, and actually when I came back, my kind of juices were flowing again, yeah. and I felt restocked. The, the, I definitely have. As a band, we kind of became a bigger band in our fourth record, and, and that record's called Puzzle, and that was about my my mum passing away. And I've always had this kind of—I mean, I've talked about this isn't like a huge reveal, but I've always had like this guilt, a slight guilt that the album that that we kind of broke through on was an album that I wrote about my mum passing, and so I I, I think that's right. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think that prohibits me from from ever wanting to th- to throw it in even if I, even if I feel at points of maybe I don't have anything to say right now or myself Ben and James are in different kind of head spaces and maybe butting heads then I'm never close to thinking oh if this I'm out of here but but it does take its toll you know because I'm so identify with the band and and you know to I mean a band is just a band that's all it is but but really it's so much more to the to the people in it, you know, it's like this yeah. is my entire life, and 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 criticisms of my band's music or or things like that, I take very personally still, and I think it stems from from writing a, a record specifically about my mum passing and kind of everything that's kind of come since then. So, so I'm still really quite sensitive about my music. I know that's not quite what you were asking, but but I just nobody comes under that umbrella, certainly. Yeah. So, so like we did a the unplugged, and then last year we got approached by a young filmmaker who was who wanted to make a movie in a reaction to an album we'd made. So then we did that last year, and and that was t- because at those moments I didn't feel my most creative. I didn't feel like, like sparks were just happening. I needed someone else to kind of give me a spark. And pursue a different avenue, but still keep within the banner Keep of the within band. the band. Because yeah. myself, Ben and James, we've known each other from when we were seven years old. And oh, is it that long? Yeah, wow. it's a long time. And the, the boys are twins, obviously. So so it's a lot more than just a band. And I think that's part of the reason we have survived so long. We've we've all been through a lot, individually and together. And, and I think without that real old school, we are a gang, you know what I mean? When you're a teenager, you're like, we are you know, we bleached our hair at the same time, for goodness sake. <laughs> Look, we've all seen your various hairstyles over oh the my years, God, Simon. I, don't, don't start. I mean, we should do a little catalogue of those. I'm sure I'll put, I'll just, I'll just put a flicker book up of all your hairstyles <laughs> over the years. Everyone will be spewed or recycled. Some of them are very successful. Others less so, so but look, it's fine. I was talking, to, I remember when I was talking about hairstyles the other day and, um, I once took in um, a picture of a very, very good-looking skinhead Armani model when I was about 14 to my barber shop. Uh-huh. And I went, can you just do that for me, please? <laughs> and no, I actually didn't say that. I think I said, can I look like that? <laughs> What's and, and, he, and he went, no problem. <laughs> Strimmed it all off. Now I've got, you know me, I've got a very long, long yeah. face. <laughs> 
I don't see there's a no big, work a with big it. skinhead crew cut. Doesn't <laughs> really, I certainly wasn't an Armani model, but I did wear a very woolly hat for the summer. Oh, did, oh no. Oh, it looked terrible, mate. I couldn't pull it off. That's so hilarious. I'm <laughs> taking a picture of Lenny Kravitz and going, I want my hair like that. It's like, where, where do we start, young man? Um, <laughs> you know, I just want to look like him. Please. Just want to be cool. Yeah, that's so funny. That's exactly what I used to do, taking pictures as well. It's so. <laughs> but in a, in a sense, I mean... You're a family. You're you're an offset of your family, but this this is the band. This is the family. Well, we are, it? and and I think you know Ben and James have a brother as well, and he worked with us for years, and um, he now doesn't work with us. But um, we've got three or four people in our crew that have been with us for twelve to fifteen years, and and actually none of us, the three of us, have have our own kids, which is just kind of bizarre. It's not been a specific, particularly a plan or anything. So so if anything, it, it, we are a family, mm. and and. And that's that's kind of how you survive. I think anything in life is your your community, your friends, and your family. Because yeah. you know what, even from the outside, when people think things couldn't be going better, there's inevitably something. You know, where everyone's a human. Everyone's got good things going on and, and really shitty things, and it doesn't matter what age you are, wh- where you are in your life. And and I think if you don't feel kind of secure amongst the people around you, then things come crumbling down. And so. I definitely feel that with myself, Ben and James, because we have that friendship, that at points we can put the band to the side. You know, if there's actually any kind of internal conflict or someone's having a tough time, we actually don't even consider the band. You know, we're not like, oh, but what about the band? We're just turning to old friends again. Yeah, because without you being friends and human beings, there is no band. There is so no if, band. If there's if there's trauma within who we are as people and it translates, it translates into the art, so therefore there's nothing, so there's you nothing. sort that out first. And, and the yeah. joy disappears quickly, you know, it's it's because as you say, we're, we're so lucky to be work doing what we love, but when you do anything for 10 or 20 years, there's points where it does become work and a bit habitual, and, and I think that's, even in those moments, you still need to remember how valuable and how fortunate you are, because whenever I think, I've got some friends at home that are musicians and fantastic musicians, have never quite had the luck I mean, Grifter's an unbelievable musician. Grifter's friend John Lee's is yes, one, of my, is. one of my faves, and it and it's just little bits of luck here and there. Not that don't be a musician, man. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is not a recommendation, <laughs> but you know, it's like well, it's, I think you should follow your art form. You, si. it, well, thank you. Just yes. Follow what you need to do in life. That's exactly it, and then and don't let anyone tell you you can't. You know, as well, I think in this day and age. There's lots of negative sides to social media and things like that, but also there's an awful lot of positives to it, and it's people have opportunity to create things in ways that we couldn't have imagined when mm. we were growing up. And, it's true. And 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 they can like create you can create a whole industry of something in your bedroom, and I love that. You know, to just think how sharp kids are. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what age what age your son is, but he's eight and a half. So he, so he's going to be in two years. He'll know more than you probably you've ever known. You know, he probably knows more now. To be honest, I know because it's like when you're when your kids teaching you stuff. It's like right, okay, yeah, times have changed. But yeah. I, th- I, th- I have real optimism. This is no longer even an artistic thing. I have a real optimism for our world because of the next generation. I've got nieces and nephews and things, and when I talk to them. They, they just know so much more than we did. They care so much more than we did. They're aware of the impact of things that they would do. Yeah. There's a consequence that they're aware of. It. And and I just, I'm almost like wanting to shake off the kind of start of this millennium. You know, as much as the last 20 years when we've been playing in a band and things have gone well, I just, I think it's time to shake things off, yeah. you know, and, and just kind of remember what we value and and what we actually care about. And it's not necessarily opinions and shit, you know, suddenly an opinion is the most valuable thing in the world. And, and I'm, I suffer from it. If some, we will have nice posts online and then someone says something bad and I'm sitting obsessing about it. And it's like, it's just someone's opinion. But, but I find myself, I can get myself down in a bit of a hole, you know, just as I was yeah. saying earlier, being a bit sensitive. And, and it, sometimes my wife will say, but, you know, to zoom out, be a bit stoic about this and just step out and think about, you know, actually the lay of the land, how lucky we are, you know, having been healthy and things like that. And, you know, so it's, yeah, you know, so things like this are, are kind of bleeding into the music from my perspective for the first time ever, you know. And I think that's something that I wouldn't have been able to translate either musically or lyrically a few years ago. 
Um, do you think things like that come with age and experience, though, as well? Yeah, yeah I, I, I do. Because we're constantly growing and learning who, like, we, whatever we do, as growing and learning as human beings and go, all right, well, I need this now in my life. And yeah. This is who, this is where I'm at now. I think things simplify as you, as you get, as a, you know, as you get older, just you, you kind of, you focus in on the things that actually are going to make you happy. And... Do you think you, we, choose to do that, though, to simplify? Because sometimes I know people, they get older and they go, things are just getting really harder for me. Oh, really? Well, I, some people, but I think if, we choose to go, actually, well, these things in the peripheral, now they don't matter, so I'm just going to just close yeah, in on this. It's just outside noise. Yeah, may, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a headspace thing. Maybe it's maybe, maybe there's a, a comfort that, you know, I'm kind of comfortable in my work, so maybe I can aff- aff- afford to kind of spend time thinking about the other things. And, mm. and sometimes when people are working week to week and things, you maybe don't, you know, we're fortunate that we can kind of sit and think, mm, I'm about to do a, go on tour for two years, you know. We maybe get to, to per, perceive things in a slightly different way, perhaps, you know. But I think it's very important to step back sometimes if... Because I'm always terrified of the walls sort of closing tumbling in. down yeah. and closing in. If, one, I don't think enough or I overthink. Overthink. Are you, do you, how are you sleeping? Because that's, that's when my mind's raised in a struggle. That really depends what type of day I've had. So if you're physically shattered from a long shoot or something you would... Well, sometimes I can be physically exhausted but my mind is like a scale electric track. And just won't stop. That's the worst. That's just such a frustrating... Because you just go, I just really want to sleep, man. I, I just know. want to sleep and my mind will not turn and, off. And the nature of saying that to yourself just makes it oh, worse, doesn't it? It's like you're, cranking it's it like, up. It's like, let's go faster. Let's go faster. <laughs> <laughs> I swear some nights that I'm going to sleep, I can literally feel my synapses just exploding, you know, like I just yeah. feel, and I'm like, please shut off. And What do you, what do, you do in, in times like that? I've actually, well, there's a few things. I've, I've done meditation for five years now, like transcendental meditation. Which, Have you? Um, which I, I picked up. I read about David Lynch doing it years ago and it always kind of stuck with me. Well, I went to, um, I, I was at a, at MIF this year, and I went to hear and see tra- uh, David Lynch do a talk on uh, transcendental no meditation. He was, there, he was on Skype from, right, from the cinema. Okay. Yeah, and people were asking a question. And I didn't, I knew a little bit about it because a good friend of mine is an advocate. And were you, tempt- were you tempted? Or? I, I was I tempted pre or post? Pre. Probably more than I was post. Okay, but I, th- I was, certainly wasn't shutting it off. But I was going. I I didn't have any frame of reference, so I wanted a bit. I need a bit more knowledge before I would even attempt yeah. to go down that road. Because there is a, a commitment involved. You know, yeah. it's, um, I, I feel I actually when we um, finished, we made a double album a few years ago, um, and and at that point, um, Ben our drummer, he wouldn't mind me saying he was having a bit of trouble with drinking at that point, and that was the closest the band ever came to breaking up and it was like day one of making a, a double album, which for any muses out there, making a double album is exactly twice the amount of work. <laughs> it, it's not quicker in any way. It was just twi- and, and actually at the end of that session, I had, had a bit of a breakdown actually in tour and we had to cancel some shows. And at you, that, you did, sorry. Yeah, and, and at that point, I was at an airport. We just landed in New York and I just... I just folded. It was it was really strange. I thought I was having a panic attack and what, so um, mentally and physically just exhausted. D- yeah, just I uh, couldn't stop kind of crying. I mean, it's a wee bit. It's not nice to talk about, but but it's been a bit of a turning point in my life, um, and that was what made me think I need to find a way to deal with these intense emotions if it comes again. And so so straight away, so that was what kind of kicked me into doing meditation, and I feel like. It would it would take no God forbid you have you know anything forces you to have to do it but that's the kind of thing I, I catered parts of my life because I, I realised I needed it and, and you're right because it's not just an easy thing that you do five minutes every day it's like two two twenty minute kind of yeah. sessions and and it takes a little while to really bed in and um, but it's really changed my life I also if I'm struggling to sleep at night there's a a breathing technique called four seven eight. 
Go on. Which, can you talk it, to me about this? Yeah, or is yeah. This quite... No, this is this is just you can Google this. This is just available on like you see. Breathe in four seconds through your nose, hold your breath for seven seconds, and then breathe out for eight seconds through your mouth with your tongue like that. It's just for um, listeners, Simon just is forgive me. placing his tongue above his bottom teeth towards the, the towards hard the... palate of his mouth. Yes. Can, 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 can and you picture that it? is how he sounds <laughs> when he's doing it. But, but it's remarkable. It is remarkable. See, for those nights, just, you know, if you've got script or anything running through your mind, yeah. I, swear, I swear you do it four, like, see if you make it through four or five times, you, you'll feel your whole body. It's something to do with you get out certain blood, like a certain... Uh, you basically reoxygenate your blood or something like that. There's a, there's actually a, there's a scientific reason that it works. It's, right. it's it's not perhaps as as um, out there as a meditation or something like that. It's actually, you know there's it's, it's very yeah. But still, you know, you say you use words like out there. I never found it sort of out there. There was a lot of sense that was made when David Lynch was talking about yeah. it, and for someone who really know anything about it yeah you know, i mean the, little and then a friend of mine who's been doing it how long you've been doing it for now five, that's five years to like, i think he's been doing it d- at least double that okay like because i was saying but you know you know it's very hard to sort of find calm spots where you can just be quiet and he went i can do it on a packed train i can do it anywhere yeah, that's that's the weird thing because you can. Yeah, I love what you said, and the thing is, I believed him. You know, yeah. I, I I totally get it. I did it in the train up here, actually. You know, and just it's easy enough. People go about their business, and you just kind of slowly just kind of drift off, and it's uh, it's really really help help me slow my mind down. You know, I think Which I think it's just so important. It, 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 I mean, I know we're talking about not sleeping, but sometimes it doesn't have to be about trying to get to sleep when the mind's racing it, so much exactly i mean we're, we're turned on all the time these days they're not you know it's been talked about a lot but we're all reachable all the time you know from the moment you wake up open your eyes in the morning you've missed messages calls you know whatever and you just there is there is a real we kind of have neglected our, ourselves almost as as a as a species you know mm-hmm. and 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 progress is so important but but if we're regressing in other ways, I think that can that can become an issue, you know. Which is why I've got so high hopes for the the next generation because they've they're going to grow up with all this nonsense. It's like it's there, and it's no longer shiny and new. And oh my oh my god, how cool is this? It's just a tool. Yeah. And I, and I, and I feel that like that's when we'll really maximise what technology can do when it's more of a tool than a than a bright shiny bit of kit, you know. Um, but it, it's. You know, it's just a, it's an unusual time, you know, it, maybe it's just getting older and just maybe that my dad felt exactly the same way as I do now. I when know, he was... see, I think that sometimes. I went, oh, well, maybe my dad or the generation felt that. I don't know. You just think, now I think... No, I think they were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's like some generations, I think, are more closed off. It's like, I really don't want to be closed off in my uh, thoughts or opinions or what I think I know. Yeah. Like, I'm very open to it. Oh, really? Because oh, well, I never thought of it like that. Now you're saying that. Like, there's sometimes my son says things to me and I go, wow, that's... that's yeah, you've hit on something there with it. That's smart for an eight and a half year old. You're finding some sort of metaphor for a Godzilla film to the current... Climate change problem. <laughs> wow. Go, wow, and you've already explained yourself. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, that's where we're, every day is a school day, no matter what age you are, isn't it? Well, you know, I know, it, but it I truly think is. It, surely it should be, shouldn't it? It should be. So it, why, why are, when some people are so closed off with their opinions, yeah. and, and, I, and I don't... You see, I still think there's some people of our generation that are, so I'm not saying it's a past generation. No, it's not. Like you're that. right, you're right. I think... There's probably in that instance, it's it's also people have egos involved. You know, no one likes being told they're wrong or what they think is is, is wrong. And I think the uh, you know, like I, I was doing a bike training course last week, and and the, a the bike guy, training course, but yeah, what? just just a motorbike thing. Oh, I just, are you a motorbiker? 
Wait, I want to do it. Not in Scotland. I'm not. <laughs> fucking in Scotland. Now, please. I know. I, I really, I've been wanting to for years, so I'm just going to get my licence and then not actually get a bike, Craig. <laughs> I promise, I broke. <laughs> Don't um, promise me, promise your wife. Yeah, no. She will well, not want you out on those ones. I'm under strict orders, actually. <laughs> but, um, and, and the guy I was, I was talking to, he was the complete opposite politically and everything, the guy that was teaching me. And and we sat and we had a chat, and he didn't change my mind and I didn't change his mind. But, but at the end, we both kind of said, I'm glad we talked about that. You know, because t- he told things to to me that I was unaware of. He was talking about his history, you know, through the 70s and 80s and just how, why he had a certain perspective on certain things. And I was saying, well, with, with what I do, the people I know, you know, it's like, this is how I view it. Mm-hmm. And it was just really quite a nice way because he didn't get pissed off at me saying, well, I don't agree with that. And and I did secretly get pissed off. Because <laughs> I was like, how can you think that way, you lunatic? But, but it was just, it was quite... In the, you know, it's just those moments where in an online world, that doesn't happen. You know, and, and again, I don't, it sounds like I'm digging out social media and, and all that. I'm, I'm not really, but, but it just, it hides any kind of nuance and it doesn't encourage nuance. And that's why I think pe- people do, if, if, if someone says, I don't agree with you, people, mm. people are happy to get perhaps a little more offended. And I don't think it's, an, as you say, it's an age thing. Maybe it's always been like that, but just it's been exposed in a new way, and you know they love a jump on. Yeah, you know, that's love, and it's so easy because everybody has their their personality or their certain persona on social media, or it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. It's not them. No, it's a it's a version of yourself you want people to see. I, I've I've never had a personal um, Twitter or Facebook, in partly because I've. I'm kind of too shy shy for that. I do start to think, I'm like, oh, well, the stuff I think's interesting is probably stuff I do with my band, so that's out there anyway. Yeah. You know, and, and again, that's, pro- that's not the spirit of connecting and communicating, but I'm like, no, no, I don't need to tell anyone that. They don't need to know that mm. I'm doing this today. And, and Which we- is why I'm so chuffed that you've done this, because we're not necessarily um, talking about the band, because the focus is always on the human aspect. Which I no, really appreciate. Which, no, which I really love, and the only reason... I think I went on Twitter years ago. I didn't really know how to do it. I was going, well, how do we do this work? You're far bad at it. You're doing I all right. Was, no, no, no. And then, I, and then I said something. I'll tell you off mic. I can't really talk okay. about that. I said something not that great about a certain show that I was doing, but I thought it was a private message. Oh, <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's 101. No, it, no I, I didn't know. I genuinely didn't know what I was doing. And... It, and it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Um, it was. It was certainly my opinion of something mm-hmm. of my own work, and then I was advised, "Yeah, you shouldn't be on here." Did and then it, the it next grew thing, legs. The, what? did it grow legs? Then I take it mm, in that regard. Or? It grew legs and ran to exactly the wrong people. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, but then when I met Griff and we decided to start this, I thought because I had a, obviously I had a a larger profile than a brand new podcast that no one's mm-hmm. heard. So we, we used that bounce back yeah. and forth and now we it's an, it's a really nice balance and I I'm hopefully learning how to yeah, use absolutely. social media in in, in a in a in, in yeah. a way that's business like that's for me and him. But the thing is it's an innocent thought that, that you've put out there back in the day. You know, it's like it's just yeah. you know, in the no harm that meant or you know it's just as you say you're just communicating to your buddies but then it's, it's suddenly it's like there's a consequence and and that's what's yeah. scary because you know regardless of what you whether you said right or wrong you, you but it's it, there it's you've, the, you've said it yeah and, and then inevitably those things do make their way to the to the one person that shouldn't hear it and again that's you always sense a little bit of that on exactly it. People, oh i'm gonna make sure that they see that you you know and, yeah. and that's that's the kind of snidey side of people it can bring out but having said that it's the things we're even talking about it's such small percentages but it but the volume of it is just you know the, the empty it, vessels make the most noise kind it's of it's really know. true though and if you get involved with that nasty side and it's very you see it all the time and I just sort of kind of scroll past it I don't I hear my life and we've been very lucky we've had very Limited. Yeah. I don't think we've had any negative sort of. Get comments. your negative comments in now, ladies and gentlemen. 
So says Simon Neil if you can't yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quoting that. But that, that'll, that'll be on our tour posters for next year. <laughs> yeah. Get your negative comments in now, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it ceases to become um, last night's fish and chip paper that gets thrown in the bin. It's there. It's the, I know. And it gets dragged up now. Yeah, there's no such thing as can end the rear view mirror no, quite the not same at all. way. And, and I do feel for youngsters when... You know, think about. I think about the amount of times I've been lying in the corner, s- sick from drinking too much, or making a f- fool of myself at parties. Last one, up, you know, and thank goodness that no one was there to post that stuff. You yeah. know, and that there's just that's why I'm also saying about the next year. They know that there's a consequence to things like my nieces. You know, they're kind of slightly. I maybe shouldn't say this. They're kind of un- underage, but they still they have a wee drink, but but they're not like out at the park. Getting tanked up the way that perhaps we used to do. Just you, I was. You, yeah. you know, I mean, that's what we all did. I mean, yeah. Well, because there was because there was nowhere else for us to go. Uh, no other distractions. You, it was your your community, your neighbourhood was. That was what you did. If you yeah. wanted a bit of your alone time, you would go out. Now the alone time is this. You know, you can almost have alone time now in a room full of people, and it's kind of yeah. tipping. It, which I is, mean, I, I'm gonna go for the fact that I think going around the park. At half past six, seven with a bottle of cider is probably more healthy. Yeah, I, I think don't so. know. I don't, don't, we get your vitamin. Please don't you know, quote me on that list. Vitamin D and all that. You <laughs> should get. You know. Um, but yes, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a, it's a really unusual time, and I'm still trying to things like social media and things. I'm still trying to kind of slightly navigate. You know, in the way. Are you I'm, in charge of your social media, or is like is that a record company thing? I, I, I do the social you socials and, and actually my wife Francesca helps out a lot because I, I would. Oh, I thought she was. She's, she's very good. She's yeah. great. I, <laughs> she's I know. Yeah, that's why it's that's why it's better now. Than <laughs> used to, I used to spend like three days thinking about what caption to put. You know, I'd be like, oh, that sounds. No, I'm trying to be too funny there, and, and then I would say, oh no, that joke will get missed. Uh, Going that, back to what we were saying before, though, overthinking. Overthinking. I think that comes into play here as well. Yeah. Let's not overthink. Yeah, let's not do. I know because. It's a thankless task. Like, you know, no one else is overthinking. You know, because if I go socialise, then I'll come and say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. You know, I should maybe have... And then Frankie will say to me, do you think that they're sitting thinking about what you've said? Absolutely no, not. No one's thinking about you as much as you are. You know, and that's that's like a... To me, that's a survival tool, you yeah. know. And and it is. No, no one cares as much about what you're kind of up to as you as you think they do. So if you feel you've embarrassed yourself or this or that, it's it's... Never as bad as you think. You no, know. it isn't. Yeah. I do want to talk about touring. Of course, because I, I mean, you, you know, you know, I've got, to... I've got a, a fair few mates, uh, uh, musicians, and I, I do worry about them on tour and about the toll it sort of takes on them. Mm-hmm. And and these are some people who have got family and they've got lots of kids and they're away from them and but also how they deal with it with personally within themselves because it's 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 hard it's I mean it's a tough it, it's a tough one isn't it I know I mean and it's not you know I know it's anyone that gets to tour is, is lucky we're not saying it's you know I'm not saying it's a nightmare job but see at points when you've when you've given 10 15 years of your life on the road and like six or seven months of every year you're away from home it's really hard to kind of explain how solitary that can feel you know and and I'm lucky that Francesca comes into her with me and that was because yeah, a few years ago you know when I had my yeah. kind of do I realized there was a certain few things I needed to change in my life to make this sustainable you know and and basically if I hadn't made those changes, I was going to hit the same point two years down the line, and then the same point again two years down the line. Can, um, I, do you, can I ask about the changes that you made? I mean, you don't have to tell me. We don't course. have to go down that path. No, no. So, so it was a. So I did my started my meditation. I stopped taking any. I still smoke weed, right? But I stopped taking any other kind of class A's. Classes, you know. That's also the bad thing about being in tour. You can really get into a bad swing of what is normal. You know, and and it can really mess with your psyche. Quote unquote normal. Yeah, quote unquote, yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, no one's normal. You know, forgive me. Uh, no, yeah, no, no. no, no I, I, but I know. I'm just saying. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so that so I, I curbed all that, which was was tough because a lot of my friends still like the odd party and that, and but they're very respectful. I basically tried to. There was a couple of people in my life that I hadn't quite realised, but that 
I would feel worse every time I would hang out with them. Friends that I'd had for a long time and actually, not, not to sound too cutthroat about it, but after after about like a few years of just been not feeling right hanging out with them, I just thought maybe I wouldn't see them for a little while. And actually, I felt, you know, at points I felt my shoulders just coming back and relaxing. And yeah. and I'm sure, you know, there's two sides to every story. I'm, I'm not an easy person to deal with or be friends with. But there was, so I, I basically kind of upturned my whole life when, with the boys as well. At, at that point, I kind of had to, because I've, I've done all the kind of the music, all the creative with the band over the years, you know, at points I've, I've really had to say to the boys, look, I, I really need help now that this isn't a solo project you know and, and and the boys have you know we're a team don't get me wrong we are a gang but at, at that point having just got through making a double album with another 20 songs that were became a third the, the next album we in the base, space of 12 months we released the opposites in a, an album called similarities and there's like 38 songs on there and I, I just almost killed myself and at that point not, not physically, you know. I mean, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. I almost broke myself down properly, and at that point, I was like, I, I just needed help, you know. And it was the first time where I'd actually turned around to my friends and kind of said, "I think I need a bit of help here," because you kind of have your ego, and, and you know, especially young men in this day in this day and age, it's, we're more aware of it than ever, which is great. Yeah, you know, it's getting it's getting so much better. I think it, it needs to though, yeah. because. You know, our, my dad and his generation, it was like, no, no, you know, you're not going to be finding out how they feel unless they're raging, you know, but No, no, no. And even then, it just comes over as rage. They're not going to go, do you know what? I'm not having a particularly good yeah. time right now. And you wouldn't even find out why they were mad. No, or, you know, like, no. you know, it's just, like, oh, right, okay, must have been a bad, you know. And so it, it's, it is extremely healthy that people can express themselves now and that that again that's a, the positive to social media see to be able to reach out to someone that maybe you've even never met and feel that you're you've got this connection you're kind of supporting each other in a really unusual way and in a in a really helpful and manner you know i think that's um yeah that 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 feels right at the moment but it's it's a tough it's, touring is one of the most fun slash damaging things you can do to to your psyche you know male female trans whatever you are and it's not that's not specific to men i don't think no it does seem like that men are the ones that are most stupid <laughs> that would go on tour we, we know this <laughs> yeah we do know this. <laughs> we're the idiots that persevere and then and then you know end up falling over and wondering why we're falling over <laughs> i'm almost at the top you know um so i, I I worry about my friends in tour, people we're in tour with, I worry mm -hmm. about. You know, a lot of the boys in our um, crew have kids and everything, and I'm yeah. very aware that when they're away from the other side of the world, it's maybe 12 hours' time difference, and they're trying to maintain, like, a family life and some kind of normalcy for the kids, and 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 that takes real effort and and real focus and kind of fortitude, to be honest. It take, um, I think... Not to like say that being in the band is kind of trickier, but because there's an ego involved and there's like, there's like you know a kind of a, an adoration when you're playing the show, you know that that can sometimes bleed into the rest of your day that is really unhealthy. And I always try and really the show is my most fun part in tours. I'm sure it is for most people when they're road, but I really try and shake off the show. Afterwards, you know, I actually go and, and I'll sit by myself for like three quarters of an hour, an hour after the show because I just I have to try and deflate the ego. This sounds so unglamorous and things, no, no, but this no. is survive. This is how to survive. Well, you have to filter it all out. You have to filter, or else it's there the whole time, and you, you're either then you're not sleeping. Then you're not exactly, <laughs> exactly. And God bless weed, because see, see, honestly, if I didn't, if I couldn't smoke a couple of joints after a show then either I'd still be partying as hard as I was and, and for, for my sins or I'd be falling out with people or I'd, or I'd have lost my mind ages ago and said, I'm out here, this is bollocks. And then, and then suddenly you make an extremely stupid decision mm. of, of a whim, you know, and that's that's what happens in tour. That's why bands break up because you, you can sometimes, you've been in each other's pockets and then someone says something and you go, no, fuck you. And then it's just you don't see each other, you know, and it can be so final. And it's well, it's, we've 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 seen, seen it. it with some we've some of the very well documented. I know, and um, you know, we we share a couple of friends, and and they, it's wonderful when you see 
you know, how long they've been doing it. And, and you do worry about people, you know, and, and you, you know, if you're seeing some of your buddies that maybe you haven't seen for a little while, you, you'll sometimes see closer, whether the, 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 at the peak or, or at the trough. Yeah. And, and, you, and there's nothing sadder when you see someone, you just want to say, are you all right? Yeah. You know, and, and inevitably the answer is, I'm fine, I'm fine. But we know like, it's not. You, you know, <laughs> some, some needs to change to, you know, and, um, but then that's all you can do is be there for your friends because it, it's it's um, it's addictive what we do as well. You know, go, going on the road. The only reason that you, you kind of do it is because it is an addictive, like a drug. You know, it's it's. And it's a, the, I mean, you know, I can only speak for me, but like, there's a need. There's an I, I have I have to do yeah, what I, I do, to. and I'm, I, I'm. Well, you don't feel your, yourself. I don't feel like I'm being me. Like that's a big part of who I am. That's, yeah, that's sitting course. dormant unless I'm doing it. And yeah. Do you do you feel Quite a bit different if you're doing theatre shows. Like, does that I try, bring? I, try, I just try not to do theatre. Okay, okay, <laughs> really, yeah. Okay. I try not to. No. Um, oh God, for so many reasons. Yeah. Did you start in theatre? Yeah, like, I did. I okay. did. I did. But in the what nineteen years or whatever I've been doing it, no, I do very little theatre. Okay, okay. I don't feel as I personally don't feel as comfortable. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Well, it must be it's so it's it's a different discipline, really. I mean, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Your headspace must. I mean, that's perhaps more like a a performance. Does that does that because it start because it's like it just feels like a completely. It feels sometimes it feels slightly alien to me. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can imagine it um, because it's a different way to inhabit. Completely. Well, everything. A different way to work and from it, the ground up. How do you, for me with touring, it's the travelling that that can sometimes be the toughest. But the waiting around, spending there isn't yeah. that. Is that is that the toughest part of your job when you're waiting? No, I'm 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 so I'm paid to wait. <laughs> really? Is that just <laughs> yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah, waiting's part of it now. I mean, we only we and luckily, I feel so lucky to work with incredible sort of inspiring people that we sit around and have conversations certainly not as in depth of as what we've done yeah, but, yeah tonight, I mean, we're having a, but you get those little snatches you get those 10 or 15 minutes of somebody's life or someone goes do you know what i'm feeling this today you get very close and you go all right we're being called i'll tell you later i'll fill you in later yeah. and then, but then you never get back to that point because because it's distracted you know, we, it we which you know going back to what we spoke about at the beginning when you were talking to me about why i started this i suppose it's to finish a conversation that yeah, okay. we may have started because if you had some of your buddies on here have I've, had a, I've had a fair few so is, yeah it's something I mean, it started off like that is, and is that because see just sometimes with your friends it can be tougher to actually in a conversation like this kind of dip below the surface has it been yeah great? no it's been it's been you know as lovely and in-depth as this has been <laughs> yeah it's been incredible well, you're very disarming i mean like you know i've only met you a couple of times but yeah. you, you know you make feel very relaxed well, but sure even, when we fir- even when we first met it was like oh god wow <laughs> yeah. i think we're gonna get on like because we were both so happy to see know, each other and it was that. like wow this is brilliant <laughs> it was like two peas in a pod it was two peas in a pod simon i'm so thrilled that you've come on this and, and, and done it and we've had this conversation i know thank I've really you really loved it i hope yeah i hope i haven't spouted too much nonsense but it, it was you've just you haven't at all it's been an absolute joy and i really mean it and i really can't lie it was lovely you're a gentleman Craig. Thank thanks you, for man. having me brother another episode is done what great company simon is he's so warm and funny he's one of those characters that um you know those people that that you meet him and you go god where have you been it's like we've, we've known each other for ages he's just like that and he's so smiley and um yeah i really hope all that came across he's such such top top fella and i can't thank him enough for coming to meet us and coming on the podcast it was a great way to end the year um and this is the end of the episode. Yeah. So look, if you've just joined us and it's your first episode uh, and you like musicians, go back, go back through the, the catalog. Um, we've got loads of great episodes with people. We've got, who we've got, let's think, uh, Nile Rogers, John and Laura McClaw from Reverend and the Makers. I can't speak. 
um, Bill Ryder Jones, Gaz Coombs, Lone Ladies, loads of people. I'm sure I've missed somebody out there. But yeah, go back and uh, pick, pick an episode out. See if you want to get to know someone a little bit better. And I'm sure you will. So uh, you'll know where to find us. We're on all the social medias, at Two Shot Pod. And um, yeah, well, should we just meet back next Thursday? Okay, well, look, I hope your week back, work, school, college, uni, whatever you're going, whatever you're doing, the transition is nice and smooth. Um, And yeah, we shall see you on Thursday next week. So until then, I've been Craig Parkinson. He's been producer Griff, and this has been the Two Shot Podcast. Thanks so much. The Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Then Thickens. Cheers. Cheers.